things to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I, Aaron Devapriyam, servant of God, coming to you all in the mighty presence of God. And what a wonderful privilege that God has given every one of us again and again the privilege in the presence of God. Somebody say Amen. Praise God. Shall we all bow down our heads and close our eyes before entering into the word of God, the church of Smyrna. Praise God. Shall we all bow down our heads and close our eyes. Gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God, God of heavens and Lord of lords, King of kings, most to high God. We thank you and praise you, praise you, praise you, Father. You are the living God. You are the mighty God. You are the wonder walking God. You are the king of the universe. You are the most high God. Lord of hosts, we thank you and praise you, praise you, praise you, Father God. Wonderful God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are speaking, Master God. The seven churches, the seven characters, the seven servants, seven Master God, the shepherd holder in each and every individual soul is the seven churches, the seven characters. That's what you are speaking today, Father God. Thank you, Lord, the previous one, Father, you spoke the church of Ephesus, that lovelessness, Master God, for God, Father, and we need to have the loving Godness. That's the most important thing. And today, Father God, you are speaking about the church of Smyrna and where the church is persecuted. We need to survive. We need to, Master God, survive in the persecution. And that is only absolutely by the loving word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Master God, speak to us, leaders and guiders. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise God. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, today the word of God, God speaking that in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, just I wanted to remind again that we are in the duration of the mystery of seven churches. That's what the living word of God is talking about, dear friends. Mystery of seven churches. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, we, we can see here the mystery of seven stars. Jesus speaking to John. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lamps. The seven stars are the angels, angels of the seven churches. Seven stars are seven angels of the seven churches. And the seven lamps which you saw are the seven churches. Dear friends, Again, I would like to just put a, a reminding of the introduction that Jesus right hand, we are seeing the seven stars. He is talking about seven stars or seven angels of the seven churches. Keep in our mind the present understanding. The present understanding of the living word of God is seven stars, seven angels means who? Who is the angels? Who are the angels now? What, what is the exactly that Jesus meant? Jesus meant that, see, that every servant of God, every servant of God who is leading and guiding the church. Church means, again I am saying, the body of Christ. So, who is leading the body of Christ as being the part of Christ is the servant of God, is, is the pastor. He is the evangelist, he is the bishop, he is the, the, the individual soul you are guarding of yourself and bringing the souls to Lord Jesus Christ. So you are also the angel of God. That's what the, we, we, are, we have been uh, becoming by Christ Jesus the privilege to have to lead the shepherdhood. That's what is the good shepherd and he makes us to be as a shepherd for the bringing the soul. So it is you and me who leads, who guides the people to come to Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what the message, the letter to you. That's what you and me and God is giving. So every leading person, every God servant, every a pastor, Every bishop, every evangelist, 
every God servant must know that this is letter written by Lord Jesus Christ and that letter, the second letter, the first letter, the letter for the Ephesus and now the church of Ephesus, now the letter for the church in Smyrna in revelation of Lord Jesus Christ. And the lamp stands, we know very well, it is the seven churches. So seven lamps are there and seven angels God is speaking to. And among the midst of the uh, lamp, Jesus Christ is walking in each every church. So seven churches is the present. Seven churches, it can be seven eras, seven durations. But today the word of God is telling seven churches are you and me because the seven characters must have in a church and the church is the body of Jesus Christ. You and me are the body of Christ, body of the parts of the Christ Jesus. Somebody say amen, praise God. Now dear friends, let's go inside now. The church of Smyrna, church of Smyrna, it's a very large church, praise God. And here the word of God is saying that it's a very, very important city actually in the physically, the important city in the western coast of Asia Minor. And it has got a, a good uh, educated area and schools of medicine and science. Everything is available here. And the word we see that in Revelation chapter 2 verse 8 to 11 talks about the persecuted church. Listen carefully. Persecuted church. Now God is giving this church, this character, that survivability of the persecution. Dear friends, it's a very, very important thing. Lovelessness of church of Ephesus, it had an internal matter. But today, in the church of Smyrna, God wants us to be alert that it is external matter. Somebody say amen. Praise God. External matter means what? Now we are going to face the consequences. We are going to face the persecution. We are going to face the outwardly effects by carrying the living word of God. And that's what exactly now the present days Whoever comes to God, whoever talks about Jesus Christ, whoever touches the word of God, you have the persecution, you have the negative situations, you have the terrible things that uh, we are going to die, that somebody is going to come and kill us when you are carrying the word of God. How it looks? It looks like a frightening, right? But the living word, what exactly talking? Let us go inside now. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 8 to 11, it, it, it gives us a, 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 the, a, the first, uh, first category Christians, how they are actually facing it. Dear friends, I will tell you one thing. In the beginning of Christians, they had a terrible thing that they had a beheaded their heads and they had uh, the killed by the spirits. They, 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 they had a terrible thing on spot to die, burning, and they were putting in the oil. That's what the John, the disciple John, the apostle John, he has been put in the oil and boiled. But believe it, that time itself, John has been rescued by the power of Lord Jesus Christ through the living word of God, the Holy Spirit. And he has been rescued, my dear friend. It is long time back such a great miracle. And how about today? Yes, of course, today also we see the power. And today God wants us to know that uh, we need to act not to the escaping matter now. It's not the escaping matter, but it is living for Christ. Praise the Lord. That's what recent... Uh, Times we are seeing that the people are burning and uh, people are uh, uh, they're killing and we Christians, two believers, God servants are there dying. It's not the time for us to escape now. It is time for die for Christ because it is 
gains to us. Philippians 1.21 Praise God. If I live for Christ, if I die, it is gains to us. That's why for whatsoever reason the death comes, it is for as a believer of Jesus Christ, we welcome it because I like to die for Christ Jesus. Praise God, dear friends. That's what God is alerting this, this word today. The revelation for the, the church of Smyrna is that be prepared that you will be persecuted, but still you are rich and you can overcome it. And that is the power of God works in us and we are live for Christ. If we die, it is gains to us. Praise God. And that's what the living word of God. The first beginning Christian congregations, they had for uh, actual examples for the today's present believers like you and me. Praise God. So this message was from Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Lord Jesus Christ himself, he has given that uh, a great privilege for every one of us. Dear friends, in verse 8 it says, what God says in verse 8, And to the angel of the church in Smyrna, write, These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. Who is speaking? The Lord Jesus Christ. How? He died for us and now he is alive. Somebody say amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, my dear friends, he died for you and me on the cross. For every humankind he died. How many of us are able to recognize that? That's what the actual thing now. It's a time to realize that our Lord who defeated the devil, the death, and he overcome with the having the power of resurrection. And now he's giving that Letter, praise God. So the identity of first and the last and the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ, he is giving this wonderful, uh, the, the, the word of God. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 13, it says that, 22 verse 13, I am the Alpha and Omega, praise God, verse 22. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last. It says, you know what he is saying that he is covering everything. We are only in between one page. Our life is one page of the whole book. So God is the beginning and he is the end. He is the forever lasting life. That's the beauty of Lord Jesus Christ. So the everlasting, you and me are going to involve in the an everlasting life by the blood of Christ. Amen and amen. Praise God. That's what uh, uh, the word of God is saying here. That Jesus is, is acknowledging of uh, everything that the actual to know the actual the persecution of this particular church my dear friends dear friends today through the the church of smarna god is speaking saying that we are need we, we need to prepare the facing the persecution so we need to prepare to live for christ praise god and that's what uh, I know he's saying in uh, verse, uh, verse 9, if you read it, verse 9, I know your works, tribulation and poverty. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogue of Satan. Dear friends, it's a very important thing. Jesus saying, I know your afflictions. I know your poverty. So there are the afflictions and poverty. Afflictions and poverty in this church, in this character. 
which we have to think today. Now in my heart, in your heart, in our hearts, whether this affliction and poverty is there or not, yet you are rich. But still God is giving the privilege. Still God is giving the privilege to be in Christ Jesus. And I know the slander of those who say. So the slander of those who say they are Jews. And they are not actually Jews. They are just but they are the synagogue of Satan. They are the actual gathering of the devil. They are the congregation of the devil. So what is the meaning of Jew? Do you think this Jew or no, the Jew is a chosen person. Jew is a spiritually Jew person is a Jew. Praise God. Whoever born of Christ Jesus, he is being called as a spiritually Jew. Not the Jew of the tribe what we are talking about. The Jew means it is that spiritually the people of God. Praise God. Somebody say amen. So the people of God are called as Jews. Now whoever people of the children of God. Who are accepted Christ as the personal savior. Repented of their sins. And have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus. They are called as the people of God. And called as the spiritual Jews. In other words, the chosen people. Somebody say Amen. Praise God. And here, here God is saying that for these people, Smarma Church is, they are physically having the poverty. Physically having the afflictions. They've got the afflictions. Physically they have the problems and all. But they are rich. Praise God. That's what Paul says. Though they call us a poor, but I am Rich, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And here the rich is nothing but the spiritual wealth. What is the rich? We are rich in Christ Jesus. What is the rich? Spiritual wealth. Somebody say, yeah, man. Spiritually, we are wealth. We are called as the richness. That's what the word of God is talking about, my dear friend. Spiritually, we are rich. So the spirit of God is giving a, a privilege that we are spiritually strengthened and rich in Christ Jesus. In spite of having poverty and afflictions, trials and troubles. See some of the God servants they all always have the troubles. Some of the God servants they are really literally they have poverty. They look very simple. But what is exactly that one? That's the living word of God is talking about. And they are rich. Somebody say amen. Praise God. And Matthew chapter 6 verse 20. What exactly talking about? Matthew chapter 6 verse 20 says that. But lay up for your souls. Treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in all or steal. So here, where to keep our treasure? What treasure? Silver and gold? The land? The house? The money? Not this. The treasure is spiritually wealth. Spiritually you live for Christ. That one is stored in heaven. Praise God. Somebody say amen. It is stored in heaven. You know why? Because there is no moth. Moth. There is no any insects who eats the treasure. Insects or rust gets spoiled because it has been secured. Praise God. And no thieves who can steal it, who can break it neither. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So our spiritual treasure, spiritual wealth, where it is? It is stored in heaven. Praise God. And that's what Matthew chapter 6 verse 20 says. So here the identity of why you called, God called it as the synagogue of Satan. 
It is the people where they gather for the day, Satan. Today also we are hearing there is a church of Satan happening in this world. Because that is the things or lost days are coming upon my dear friend. So here there are two views why God said the synagogue of Satan in verse 9. We can see that uh, Revelation chapter 2 verse 9. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are still rich, praise God. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but they are a synagogue of Satan. Synagogue of Satan. You know why? The one view it talks about synagogue of Satan. One is that this was the group of a people of group of Gentiles as physically is talking. A Gentile people who are calling them as we are Jews. So that is chosen people. We are calling it as a Jews. Instead of following Judaism and they have the self-proclaimed people of God. They are not actually people of God. But they are telling us we are Jews. They are Gentiles. They are not actually Jews. But they are called as a Jews. But they are not actually Jews. And this is the one category of that the people of synagogue of Satan. And that is the that, 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 that's the people that uh, we are appears to be like a Jew, but not Jew. They don't like to follow the Judaism. They don't like. So what exactly God speaking here? They are, they are not actually the believers. They are not actually the servants of God. But they are telling we are servants of God. But they do not like to follow Jesus. They do not like to follow the doctrines of God. They do not like to say anything. Rather, they will support you to the devil. They will support you to the worldly manners. They will support you to the worldly things. They don't like persecution. They don't like afflictions. They don't like poverty. These are the members of the church of the Smyrna is coming. That's what world God is giving, reminding again these people. And then number two, God is saying the another point of view is the synagogue of Satan, the people, it was a group of physical Jews. They are Jews now. They are actually Jews who are followed the tradition of the Mosaic law. In reality, they did not know God. Can you believe that? They are the, actually they are the Jewish people. They are, the, they are the Jews, exactly. But who are the follower of everything? They are follower of the synagogue of uh, the Satan. Can you believe that, my dear friend? Though being a Jew, one is, is not a Jew, Gentile, but called as a Jew. The other one, Jew, but did not know to follow God. Did not know the Mosaic law. Did not know accepting the, 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 the children of Abraham. They are not accepted. And these are the, they are not Jews in the sense that they did not have the faith in their father Abraham. Can you see the Luke chapter 3 verse 8? It says, Luke chapter 3 verse 8 says, Luke 3 8. Let us see that quickly. 3 8. Luke chapter 3 8 says therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance and do not begin to say to yourselves we have Abraham as our father for I say to you that God is able to rise up children to Abraham from these stones so do not just say we are the children of Abraham so do not say that I am a Jew. In spite of having a Jew, it is. But what is happening? But I did not know God in being a Jew. I did not know the Judaism. I did not know Father Abraham. But God is telling, do not say like that. But make sure I'll tell you one thing. 
every stones every stone from the stones every every person who ever believes in Christ Jesus also called as the son of Abraham somebody say amen Zacchaeus life what happened dear friends God said that he has been forgiven he is also called as the son of Abraham that means child of God so that's his child of God that means what whoever believes in Christ Jesus you are also called as the people of God the spiritual Jews somebody say amen praise God that's a privilege today to say that I am a spiritually Jew. Praise God. What a privilege. And that's what the living word of God is talking about. So here, the, the, here God is saying that uh, the, the people who are rejected Christ, being a Christian, being known to Christ, but they don't like to follow Jesus Christ. They are called as the synagogue of Satan. John chapter 8 verse 44. You are of your father the devil. And the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in truth. Because these, there is no truth in him in devil. When he speaks a lie. He speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. This is the synagogue of Satan. Synagogue of Satan we can see in John chapter 8 verse 44. Jesus explaining very well there. The actual, the theme of synagogue of Satan. So here, here he says that the synagogue of the devil is only the liar. The lies. So Jesus is dealing with a, a many such religious leader. They are saying that they are Jews. But they are not following actual what God is telling. In Matthew chapter 23 we can see all the 1 to 36. Jesus he explains very clearly there. Woe to the people who are there. The scribes and the Pharisees. Are the Jewish people. They are Jews. But what to them? Because the hypocritism. That's what we are seeing there. So they were, they were hypocrites. They have been called. But they are not following. So what is actual following? What is the following of God? It's not the tradition what to do. It's not that every day go to the church. And you are attending there. And you are reading the word of God. And then close this. Then move over around to the world. It's not that. He's telling follower of Jesus Christ. Follower of the son of God. That's the most important thing. The word. In Acts chapter. Uh, 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 we can see the Paul. He, he himself. He explains there. Paul, he says there, uh, he differentiates the true spiritual people and uh, who's, uh, who can claim to the physical connection to the Abraham. In Christ Jesus, we are spiritually Jews. And that's what in Romans chapter 2 verse 28, 29, Paul explains very clearly. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly, nor is circumcision that which outward in flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly. Somebody say a man. Who is a Jew? Who is inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. So Jew is not that outwardly. Is not that who is having the circumcision of his skin. But Jew is inwardly. Who is having circumcision of the heart. Praise God. He is the real Jew. He is the spiritually Jew. He is the, a person of God. The people of God. In the spirit. Not in the letter. Whose praise is not from men. But from God. And he praises God. In front of God. We need to praise God in front of God. 
not we need to praise God in front of the people to see. That's what the word of God is talking about. So in this letter, we can see that here one person, Polycarp. Polycarp is a, a great a person who is who has been martyred in Smyrna, and we see that uh, uh, he was a, he, he, he has come he comes under a, a great trial, and he is a Christian bishop of Smyrna. He was a Smyrna. He died in martyr, bound and burned. He has been put to fire. They are burning in Smyrna. And he was, the, the fire was uh, going to close. The fire was uh, going away. That time they stabbed him. As for fire failed to burn him, they stabbed him to death. He was a great servant of God in Church of Smyrna. And uh, he born in 69 AD in Turkey, Smyrna city. So he wrote an epistle also to the Philippians. Such a great servant of God who is in Smyrna he has been killed. This has been prophesied, given revelation by, by Lord Jesus Christ and that you will have the persecution but be prepared. Praise God. So here the unbelieving Jews in Smyrna unbelieving Jews in Smyrna they joined with the a pagans, they joined with the unbelievers, they joined with non-Jews and they are condemning to the death, this uh, uh, a great bishop uh, Polycarp. So here we are seeing that uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are they are they are the people to kill the God servants and that's what today's matter my dear friends Today the matter is the same thing is coming to you and me that whoever holding huh, the word of God they have been put to death. But in this God is giving a wonderful word for every one of us now. Do not fear in Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Somebody say Amen. Revelation chapter 2 verse uh, uh, 2 verse 10 God says do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. But be faithful until death. I will give you the crown of life. Somebody say amen. Praise God. Jesus tell, in spite of this, do not fear. Live for Christ till the death. Till the last moment who comes, they will be saved. Praise God. In spite of, you will be put into the prison as well. Bound in the clutches of the devil. But still, that's what, Daniel has been put into the lion's den. But still, he shut the mouths of the lions with the power of the Holy Spirit. Shadrach Meshach has been put into the fire. But still. They survived in the presence of God. Somebody say amen. Praise God. That's what for Smyrna God is giving a, a privilege. You are going to have the persecution. He is not making us to fear my dear friend. He is making us to overcome the death, overcome the persecution. So some of the church members will be put in the imprison. So such situation will come in your heart. And what is the character of Smyrna now? The second character God is telling you will be persecuted but fear not that you will overcome if you stand with me. Praise God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 11 and 12. Blessed are those who when they relieve and persecute you. You are blessed. Why? And say all kinds of evil against you. Falsely and for, for my sake. 
for the sake of Christ. They are blaming us. They are accusing us to do that. This, this person, they are talking. They are making all gossips about us who live for Christ. But do not fear. Verse 12. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Praise the Lord. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Huh? For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Keep in your mind. Before you they are persecuted the children of God. They persecuted the prophets. They persecuted the disciples. They persecuted all the acts of, acts of apostles. They were overcome. Praise God. Amen. So Jesus calls them. Remain be faithful. Be faithful. In suffering. This is what we need to learn today. Be faithful in suffering. Be faithful in troubles. Be faithful in uh, temptations. Be faithful to Lord Jesus Christ. In every, any situation. Somebody say amen. Dear friend. Here be faithful. Even, even to the point of death. That's what the word of God is talking about. In verse 10. And I will give you the crown of life. Somebody say amen. So whoever survives, they will receive the crown of life. Praise God. James 1.12 Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life. Which the Lord has promised to those who loved him. Today this is the exact thing we need to stand for Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends. It can be a trouble. It can be your death problem. It can be your health problem. It can be your wealth problem. It can be your children problem. It can be your parents problem. It can be your family problem. It can be in your surroundings problem. It can be in your present church problem. It can be anything but overcome in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And receive the crown of life in heaven. Praise God. Revelation 2.11, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. That's the important thing. We need to escape the second death. Because if we are those fight of persecuted, but we will escape the second death. 1 John 5, 4 and 5. For whatever is born of God, Overcomes the world. Praise God. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Verse 5. Who, he, who is he who overcomes the world in Christ Jesus. But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. Praise God. Whoever believes that Jesus is the son of God. They are the one can overcome. So that second death is the final judgment. The first death is the physical death. The second death is the spiritual death. And that's what the forever's death, everlasting death. So in Revelation chapter 20 verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall priest of God. And of Christ Jesus. And shall reign with him. A thousand years. Revelation 21 8. But the cowardly. Unbelieving. Abominable. Murderers. Sexual. Immoral. Sorcerers. Idolaters. And all liars. Shall have their part in the lake. Of fire. Which burns. With fire. And brimstone. Which is the second death. Dear friends. Through letter to the Smarna. Church of Smarna. Need to realize. If we survive. In the persecution. If we face in the persecution. Even if we die. In the persecution. But live for Christ. Keep your faith in Christ Jesus. So that you will escape the second death. Praise God. And we will have the part of the. First resurrection. So how the first resurrection escaped the second death. And that's what the actual word of God is talking. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Last. 
There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Somebody say Amen. There is no condemnation who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. We are the people. That's what the living word of God. If you are walk today according to the spirit of Jesus Christ called the Holy Spirit you are actually you are not condemned. Praise God. That's what the living word is talking about. The church of Smyrna. My dear friend, today God is giving this a revelation through the Apostle John and giving to the every servant of God to have a, a character of to face the persecution for the sake of Christ. Are you ready? And that's what the word of God is talking about. You must have the living love of God inside. And that is the letter to the church of Ephesus. And now you must be prepared and be truthful to God. Not the synagogue of the devil, but synagogue of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a member of the body of Christ. And face the persecution. Doesn't matter. You are going to receive the crown of life by Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Shall we all bow down our heads and close our eyes. Gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God. God of heavens and Lord of lords, King of kings. We thank you and praise you for this master God. The revelation to the church of Smyrna. The persecuted church. Facing for the persecution. Prepared and be ready for the persecution. And you are going to give the crown of life. Father God, let us be a, a truthful, a real, spiritual Jew. Having the circumcision of the heart. And live for you. Face any type of consequences in this worldly thing. But Master God, have the involvement in the first resurrection. And escape the second death. And live for Christ in everlasting life along with the Lord Jesus Christ with you. Thank you Holy Spirit. Every brother and sister and child. Whoever watching right now this video. Touch them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Fear not of anything. Fear not of virus. Fear not of the devil. Fear not of the sickness. Fear not of the disease. Fear not of anything today. Just be still in faith in Christ Jesus. And receive the crown of life. Thank you Holy Spirit. Be blessed in Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. May the love of Heavenly Father Almighty God be upon us. And our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Give us the strength to have this, all the trials and troubles of the persecution, but still maintain the faith in Christ Jesus and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. And the God's people said, Amen and amen. Praise God, dear friends. May God bless you all. And this is the a letter to the church of Smyrna and we are prepared for the persecution of Lord Jesus Christ for whatsoever thing but still be faith in Christ Jesus and receive the crown of life. May God bless you. See you in next video. Amen. Praise God.